first of all, Anapana Sati, mindfulness of breathing in and mindfulness of breathing out in order to establish the basis of concentration and collectedness, the tranquility of mind, the one-pointedness of mind in preparation for doing our insight work afterwards. Kinds of concentration that can be established are preliminary concentration, Parikama Samadhi, access concentration, Apana Samadhi, and fixed concentration, Upachara Samadhi. And this stabilizes the mind, clarifies the mind, and settles the mind, and refreshes the mind. And a clear mind can then begin to investigate insight. A second med meditation that can be used is visualizing a disc two-dimensional disc or a sphere 3D for casino meditation that can establish the same ranges of concentration. For example, the earth casino and visualizing a horizon with the cardinal points helps. Earth casino Visualizing and sustaining a water casino. Visualizing, stabilizing and seeing a fire casino. <coughs> and then air casino. Moving on to the Arupas, red casino, yellow casino. blue casino and white casino and then the casino based on visualizing light Casino practice is sometimes in modern circles debated as to whether it is canonical. So I'd like to put that to rest in your mind so that your faith and confidence is strong and clear. People say that the casinos aren't existent inside the Tipitaka. So I want to show you and reassure you that it is, and it's a valid Buddhist practice. Here from the Kudi Kanekaya. We'll come back and look at the meaning of that, those words there, but you can see in the red the casino phrase quite clearly. And the usage of uh, it in the Digi Nikaya at the bottom there in yellow, casino. And then the Angutra Nikaya mentioned very clearly. In the Angutra Nikaya again, several places. And there in the Diganikaya in Sangiti Sutta and Dasutra Sutta. And there in Majjhiminikaya in uh, two different discourses. And those two, three, six, twenty-seven times they are mentioned in the suttas. Diganikaya there, Majjhiminikaya there. Let's look at this uh, one just briefly. Again, the only reason of that, and those who wish to look a bit deeper, this phrase here, the blue that I've highlighted it, 
is of particular importance with our practice here because we'll be transferring from samatha into vipassana practice. The meaning of those highlighted words. Ten dasa, visualized disc spheres. Dasa kinit kasina ayatanani. Earth sphere, water sphere, fire sphere, air sphere, red, blue, yellow, white spheres, then space around and then awareness of. And then it says, from earth kasina to white kasina, these are samata, samato, it says. Then from space kasina, around, space around kasina, sphere, up and awareness sphere, these are vipassana. Very important. Okay, I'll leave it at that for those who understand the relevance of that. And that's in the Kuda Kanakaya. And one more. Okay, let's move on then. So we'll be concentrating on the first foundation of mindfulness with the nose. Around the base of the entrance to the nose, internal or upper. That can get you preliminary access and fixed concentrations if sustained with effort and the right attitude and intention. Now we're going to move on from Anapanasati and here at the belly because it's a larger surface area, different kind of concentration arises, not so single pointed. I'm going to look at that transition. But we can start to observe movement, hardness, temperature and sponginess. And the direction of to look for is this lateral movement, rising and falling. Rising and falling. And we're going to start to include the sitting posture. Rising, falling, sitting, so sweeping the full body. Rising, falling, rising, falling, rising, falling, and rising, falling. And now, sitting, sweeping the body. Rising, falling, sitting. Rising, falling, sitting touching, we're going to add a, th a fourth part. At this point, we begin the transition to Kanika Samadhi. Rising, falling, sweeping the body and touching, a touching point. So our primary object is the rising and falling the abdomen, but we don't only lock on to just that single point. And we are now including the posture as well. And we're also starting to add a vital thing, which is a touching point, which is a different kind of concentration. Now I'll be talking about that. Rising, falling, sweeping the body, and a single point goes down to the touching point. Rising, falling, sweeping the body, touching. So there's also this that where does our attention actually land? Does it land on the body? Does it actually, when we pay, it, pay our minds and attention, or does it not? Because sometimes it won't. Rising, falling, sitting, touching, left sit bone. Rising, falling, sitting, touching. This is the right hip at the back. Rising, falling, sitting, touching, left hip at the back, rising, 
falling, sitting, touching right sit bone, rising, falling, touching, and that'll be the left sit bone, rising, falling, sitting, sweep the body, touching right hip at the back on the belt line, rising, falling, sitting, touching left hip at the back, rising, falling. And here we're going to start to be able to also include things such as unpleasant feelings, tension, pain, and so on, as a point of observation, or as a phenomena of observation. So the, the noting might land on that, either the irritation of the body or the irritate, irritation of the mind. And then come back to our primary object, rising, falling, touching. Rising, falling, sitting, touching. Or it might be that there's a sensation and that is where the mind attention actually lands. Rising, falling, sitting, touching. But it might be that you don't get to touching, you just notice hearing, or you just notice smelling, tasting, or thought that comes in. And that's actually where it lands. It doesn't go as deep straight to the body. So then we come back to our primary object after noting awareness of hearing, awareness of hearing. Rising, falling, sitting, touching, right sit bone. So then it also might be the third foundation that you notice. It might be one of those things in there like disliking or restlessness. And you have to be able to take those as an object. There may be doubt that you're a very becoming awareness, having awareness of. It might be desire or it might be uh, something else that's going on in there that comes from those phenomena. And that's where your attention lands and notices. And then you note it, let go and come back to the primary object. These are secondary objects. Rising, falling, sitting, touching. So that's your home base. This practice in here focused in the belly and we're, we're now working with four touching points but these will be increased in the forthcoming slides. I want to show you how, how that works. As we increase the duration of the practice so we gain more touching points so that the mind is not slipping into hypnotic style it's very, very alert. Rising, falling, sitting, touching, left sit bone. Rising, falling, sitting, touching, right hip at the back. Falling, sitting, touching, left hip at the back. Rising, falling, sitting, touching, right sit bone. Rising, falling, sitting, left sit bone. Rising, falling, sitting, touching, right hip at the back. Rising, falling, sitting, Touching, left hip bone at the back, left hip at the back. Rising, falling, sitting, touching, right sit bone. Rising, falling, sitting, touching, left hip sit bone. Rising, falling, sitting, touching, right hip at the back. Rising, Falling, sitting, touching, left hip at the back. Okay, so now you get the idea. <clears throat> I want to make sure that you understand also about the lateral movement of the belly to be observed. 
So he's going to switch over now to a side view. And you see that the, the movement observed is this falling, rising and falling action there, side view. Side view, but our viewpoint can be inside or uh, at any point around the front with the noting rising, falling, sitting, touching, rising, falling, sitting, touching, rising, falling, sitting, touching. So just returning there back to the basic before adding in some touching again. Rising, falling, sitting, touching. Rising, falling, sitting, touching. Rising, falling, sitting, touching. So there's many more touching points that are gradually added as we increase the length of the practice so that the degree of concentration stays uh, alert. And these are up the front of the body and the back of the body and underneath the body. To give you an idea, there's a diagram. Rising, falling, sitting, touching right hip at the back to give you a clearer idea rising falling sitting touching rising falling sitting touching right sit bone rising falling sitting touching left sit bone Okay, but this is our basic headquarters, if you like, our basic core of practice. Yet there will be times when the noting mind doesn't land and stay with the body. But we will use noting, as we've seen, about where the attention lands. So it may land on the body, as is the design in a way, the rising and falling of the abdomen. But what we start to see is that anatta and any chair get in the way. Six sensations can distract. That's including thinking and planning and everything. Then we have the feelings of body and mind. And get in the way. Then there may be the third foundation, one of the parts of perception or, uh, or of the unwholesome mind states or of the controls or positive mind states may get in the way. And there's no sequence of these can happen at any moment. So it may be body, maybe feelings, maybe body again, maybe the mind state gets in the way maybe back to the body and that's all called kanika samadhi okay let's move on to another topic we're going to be covering today which is that uh, we're going to be covering the from the fourth foundation of mindfulness the five hindrances fourth foundation of mindfulness has a great deal of uh, content in it we're going to be looking at some of the unwholesome mind states uh, categorized and they're known as the five hindrances. Let's take a look at those. First one, karma chanda, desire. Second one, 
hatred. Next we have Tina Midder. Tina and Midder are the Pali names for feeling energyless and fed up. And they're also known as sloth and torpor. It's a bit of an outdated term. Then we have Udacha Kukucha, restlessness. And fifthly, we have doubt or Vichikicha which has uh, five objects listed in one of the books. The energyless and fed up pair tend to get grouped together. So these are called the five hindrances. So we're going to be looking at another phenomena from the fourth foundation, uh, which counters these. It's the opposite of the five hindrances. So let's have a look at the one version of the fourth foundation. There are several. So this is an abbreviated form. Uh, we have the four right efforts, the four bases of spiritual power, five faculties and the five powers. There are two versions of the same thing, one unstable and one stable. And then we have the seven factors of awakening, which is what we're going to look at. And then the eightfold path. So this phenomena that we have here, this uh, tools for awakening, the seven factors of awakening. So have a look at that. So here we have uh, a diagram or a list of uh, that was made by Sati Saroda. Uh, it's the Sata Sambhojanga, the seven factors of awakening. Sata meaning seven. And I want to take a look at uh, at those. So here they are nestled in amongst the thirty seven factors of, of awakening, but we're just going to focus on this seven and also how they correspond to this map. Let's put them one, over to one side and then take a look. So the first one on the list at the top is Sati, mindfulness. So that's the header of the wholesome mind states. Dhamma Vichaya, the next one, investigation of dharmas involves several things. It's not just one thing. Is uh, wisdom is involved, looking at cause and effect. Interest is involved. Mindfulness is involved, and investigating is involved, which has to do with perception. Uh, perception always asks, "What is it?" and comes back with answers. Next one on the list there is virya, which is energy and effort. So we have virya in uh, both the occasionals, effort, and in the wholesome mind states, the energetic part, part there. And then we have appreciative joy, which also in the Vedana section is bliss as well. And we also have samadhi and concentration that have just popped up there. That's to do with uh, the collectedness that comes with mindfulness and the focal area. It needs to be a sustained version of that. There's also pasadi, tran tranquility, and upekwa, equanimity. There's the equanimity part. Pasadi is, pasadi is kind of in there with collectedness and bliss as well. So quality. And these work together and destroy and remove and eradicate the presence of the five hindrances. Okay. So for today,
then let's transition over to our meditation subject with a 15 minute of meditation.
Now let us chant the verses of sharing and aspiration. Through the goodness that arises from my practice, may my spiritual teachers and guides of great virtue, my mother, my father, and my relatives, the sun, the moon, and all virtuous leaders of the world, may the highest gods and evil forces, celestial beings, guardian spirits of the earth, and the Lord of death, May those who are friendly, indifferent, or hostile, may all beings receive the blessings of my life. May they, may they soon attain the threefold bliss and realize the deathless through the goodness that arises from my practice. And through this act of sharing, may all desires and attachments quickly cease and all harmful states of mind until i realize nibbana in every kind of birth may i have an upright mind with mindfulness and wisdom austerity and vigor may the forces of delusion not take hold nor weaken my resolve the buddha is my excellent refuge unsurpassed is the protection of the dharma the solitary Buddha is my noble Lord. The Sangha is my supreme support. Through the supreme power of all these, may darkness and delusion be dispelled. Sadhu, <coughs> sadhu, sadhu. Now, time for questions and answers. Just a review from the last two talks. We were dealing with the uh, introduction about the six sense stores and how they feature in meditation and some of the old stories and ways that they are related to in the texts. We also had the <clears throat> talk four about chitta, it was just an introduction to chitta. We had the wholesome and unwholesome mind states introduced, and then we had the way that the focal area, attention, intention, basic life, and the six occasional states uh, work. And we had dhammapadas to do with uh, the nature of the mind, <clears throat> such as its tendency to be uh, very flipping and wandering and jumping from thing to thing like fish out of water, jumping around distractedly. We had Nama and Rupa described. And we also had the digital Pani reader introduced with the example of the Dhammapada there and how you can click on various words in order to do that, to translate directly individual words and look at different ones. For example, we had the word cave, which uh, in the Dhammapada translation was uh, using the word cave. But I could see also in the translation there it had a hiding place. So the mind has a hiding place in the heart, whereas the original translation was the mind has a cave. <clears throat> dwells in a cave in the heart, which starts sounding a bit uh, like a biology, which might miss the meaning. Anyway, so there are many different things there from that. And then we have any questions that might come from today's practice. With that, I will move through to our end slides. Questions are welcome in the comments below.